but what I might do is um, get started. Again, we have a lot to cover. So with that, I would like to welcome everyone. Welcome to the UN Global Compact Network Australia and today's Small Business Big Impacts presentation. Next slide, please. Uh, firstly, I would like to acknowledge that this meeting is being held on the traditional lands of the Wurundjeri people of the Kulin Nation, and I pay my respects to elders past, present and future. My name is Greta Courthouse. I'm the Stakeholder Engagement Manager at the Local Network here in Australia. And with me on this call is Simiao Yu, Participant Engagement Regional Manager at the UNGC, United Nations Global Compact. Feel free to share in the chat box your name, where you're joining from today, and what you would like to learn more about today. <clears throat> Excuse me. This presentation is for existing participants of the UN Global Compact Network here in Australia, and especially for small to medium enterprises or SMEs, but also for, for any other interested businesses. We are very pleased to see so many familiar faces and names. Next slide, please. For those of you who don't know us yet, please e-meet the team. Most of us are based in Melbourne, but we also have staff in Sydney, and shortly we will be having a staff member based in Brisbane as well. Behind the scenes today are Jesse Luli, our coordinator, events and communications, as well as Elena Kaluya, um, our intern. Next slide, please. Before we begin, a quick note on housekeeping. Not that anyone needs them after almost three years of um, being locked down, but I'll do it anyway. Please use the chat function at the bottom of your screen to introduce yourself and or to ask any questions. Please use the raise hand function for questions after the presentation. Thanks, Mark. If you have any technical quest uh, issues, please contact us on the phone number that you can see on the slide. To ensure that this session is interactive and gives you the, the chance to provide feedback, we will run a poll pretty much at the beginning, um, which will automatically show up on your screen and would, will allow you to provide your answers. And we will have time or make time for a Q&A at the end of today's session. So for any questions that come up, feel free to add those to the chat box as we go and we'll pick them up later. So with that again, next slide, please, Alana. Welcome. Um, in today's presentation, we will be covering a lot. We are focusing on the offering as part of the newly released business model, which um, we will sort of briefly recap. We will specifically outline SME-related challenges and how the SME engagement strategy is addressing those. There will be a section about the general benefits and support to all participants, including SMEs. We will then update you about this year's events, announcement, and some of the offerings on the global and local level. I'll give a quick update on the trends and insights gathered from our stakeholder mapping to date. And again, if time permits, um, Simiao will guide you through the dashboard and the academy and give some helpful hints and tips as part of an academy demo. Before handing over to Simiao, one note on the definition of small to medium enterprises or SMEs. The Global Office, so GCO, defines an SME as a business with 250 staff or less. Um, and we should also mention that we acknowledge the variation of SME definitions across uh, nations, varies, I should say. So we are currently in the process of reviewing, reviewing our definition. Our engagement with SMEs is inclusive in the sense that we are uh, supportive of those business, business entities that uh, de define themselves as SMEs and might not fit the current um, definition from the global office. With that, I'll hand it over to you, Simiao, for a brief introduction to the United Nations Global Compact. Thank you so much, Greta, for this wonderful opening and welcome everyone. You as the business community play an essential role in advancing the sustainable development goals you see on the screen. And as part of the UN Global Compact, businesses can take an, an active role in having their country 10 principles also you see on the screen here. And the 10 principles of the UN Global Compact specifically focuses on areas relevant to businesses, whereby the SDGs offers a framework that increases wider societal goals. And the SDGs require collective action, collaboration across industries and sectors, 
is really the key here. So I'm so happy to have so many of you from various industries and sizes here with us. And when we look at the societal goals and the, and the 10 principles, we also need to understand the challenges for businesses. Given today's focus on small to medium-sized enterprises, we would like to first learn about your challenges and what you're facing. So Greta, what is next? Thanks, Simia. So what are the challenges that you face as an SME? I mentioned before, we would like to run a short poll that's popping up right now. Um, we would like to ask you what the challenges are that you are facing running an SME, working for one, or maybe having worked for one. So it's not mandatory for you to be currently working for a small to medium enterprise. You can select up to three answers before you submit your response. And with that, I'll give you some time to read through these options and make your selection. You see, first answer is coming through. 35% of you have participated. The wonders of technology, isn't that amazing? At the moment, inadequate access to resources is the top runner. And the runner up is uh, limited, sorry, it, are the benefits of sustainability to SMEs not being well articulated? Make sure you scroll down to the bottom of the list. There's one more hidden option. The underdeveloped regulatory agenda on sustainability. 61% of you have participated. Okay, we might leave it at that. Thank you very much. That's a very interesting outcome. And we will take this into consideration. Thank you, Annie. Annie just let us know that she was only able to select one choice, not multiple. Thank you for letting me know. I um, That is a setting change then. Sorry for that, everyone. And thank you for making your one choice and letting us know. So really the on the first, um, the first priority for SMEs or the first challenge, I should say, is the inadequate access to resources. Thank you very much. Um, we might go to the next slide. Um, thank you again for sharing your experiences with us. Um, on the next slide, or this slide that you're seeing right now, Simiao will address the broader context of the UNGCNA's SME work, as well as events, opportunities, and detailed information about the five-step plan that constitutes the SME engagement strategy. Over to you, Simiao. Thank you, Greta. So it's really loud and clear that meeting the private sector's commitment towards the SDGs must include the SMEs who actually make up 90% of business and more than 50% of employment worldwide. Yet many of them have inadequate access to resources as most of you identified, and there's also limited collaboration. So we absolutely understand your concerns. And with that in mind, the The UN Global Compact has made a decision to focus on SME engagement as part of its 2021 to 2023 strategy. And a specific SME engagement strategy has been developed to accelerate and scale meaningful impact of SMEs on sustainable development goals through capacity building, through giving you access to resources to adopt the 10 principles of the UN Global Compact. Jesse earlier on shared a link to the SME strategy paper. So if you're interested to learn more about the plan, uh, please feel free to refer back to the document. But just to give you a highlight, as you see on the screen here, this strategy identifies five key streams to address the challenges that you have mentioned. And we will enable UN Global Compact engagement companies to adopt responsible practices and thrive. So the first work stream is to create an enhanced digital support platform to enable SMEs in and outside of the UN Global Compact to access contents such as a readiness tool to facilitate SME engagement. And the second is to offer simple and tailored programming 
on the 10 principles delivered through an e-learning course, a virtual academy experience, and locally delivered peer learning groups. You mentioned you have insufficient capacity or access to those resources. So we'll bring these resources to you in the most simple and tailored manner. The third one is to initiate supply chain impact pilots working through corporate and government supply chains to take SMEs on an e-learning journey, culminating in the ability for SMEs to report on their sustainability progress. And the fourth one is to empower our local networks, like Network in Australia, to make contributions to national and regional policies, policy developments around trade, sustainability investments that support SMEs. So I see many of you also identified there's a lack of collaboration across players in the market. So we want to establish partnerships that can actually promote business opportunities and access to markets for responsible SMEs through integrating sustainability requirements in procurement frameworks, through business associations and e-markets. So these five work streams aim to engage more than 10,000 SMEs by the year 2023 through our digital onboarding, e-learning tools, and supply chain impact pilots. So as what we named our session, small businesses, big impacts. And ultimately, we can empower you to report on your sustainability progress in the most responsible and transparent manner. So next, and I also want to share with you, we developed this strategy after rounds of consultations, and we came to this conclusion that SMEs are really the key to shaping the sustainability profile. Enhancing the strategy provides meaningful pathways that will enable SMEs to identify links between sustainability, profitability, and also their individual capacities. So what we, we will offer you are these three major things. First is a learning and capacity development through practical guidance, the SMEs can act on to get through the sustainability fog. Sometimes I want to speak to SMEs, they always tell me, oh, Sumail, out there is so hard to navigate. So we want to offer you this simple and tailored guidance so you can act on and get through the fog. And second is we want to create an ecosystem network through working with companies and governments we hope to enable change in the supply chain and create a platform for you to collaborate with your customers, your buyers, regulators, and partners. We want to enable your business success, offer you clear articulation of benefits of sustainability on SMEs business goals, typical return on investment, and re related timeframes as well as levels of investments required to aid SME decision making. So now we're creating plans to further support our SMEs in their sustainability journey by improving their access to markets and lower barriers to capital. So through the remainder of the, of the year, we invite you to join our e-learning courses, particularly designed for SMEs, and you will learn more about that. Also, we are gonna open registration for peer learning groups, particularly for SMEs, and through our academy experience in quarter four. So please stay tuned. And we also plan to initiate two supply chain impact pilots by the year end. We're really happy to announce that we develop a partnership with the ITC, back at Davos to help deliver this capacity building work around the world. And we will continue to establish partnerships across the UN system and the private, the public sector to ensure the skill needed to drive meaningful impact for SMEs around the world. And Greta, in addition to the strategy, we have engagement model and our values. So over to you to share more with our friends here about the, the recent changes. 
Thank you, Simi Yao. Um, so the 2021 to 23 business model update has brought some positive changes, which I'd like to outline next. Next slide, please, Alana. Um, most of our existing participants will know about this. However, as we have some companies on the call that are either not yet participants or global participants only, um, we'd like to outline the following. So whilst, the pre whilst previously we had two different engagement tiers, signatories and participants, these have now been collapsed into one single engagement tier, participant. What that means? All participating businesses have access to the online academy and can participate in any events, both globally and locally. And if the academy is new to you, it is the UN Global Compact's digital learning platform, providing business leaders and practitioners with actionable skills to help companies move further faster in implementing the 10 principles and the UN um, SDGs. The academy is very well curated, it's business relevant, and it caters to complete beginners all the way to subject matter experts. It offers companies best practices relevant to their specific challenges and needs, regardless of corporate function um, and where you are on your sustainability journey. Also, all employees have unlimited access to the academy. And we will talk about the academy on the next slide, but I would really like to outline that no matter how many staff you have and no matter where they are located around the world, if you are a participating business, all your employees have access to the academy. We'll also, also talk to flagship events on a different slide following. In terms of media, the media toolkit, you can see that little screenshot on the side. Um, if you haven't got your toolkit and you are a current participant, global or local participant, please email me and I can send that media toolkit to you. Um, access to the Global Support Desk. The UNGC support coordinators manage our help desk and can address questions from participants. They can be contacted at info at unglobalcompact.org. Companies now get multiple layers of support from, from the UNGC, including local network support and global support. Um, Maybe one more word on the enhanced online profile on the www.unglobalcompact.org global page. Previously, the enhanced profile was only available for participants. It allows companies to display a video, link their social media feeds and highlight the SDGs from their communication on progress submissions. Um, signatories, which don't exist anymore, um, only had a simplified display which all, with only sort of basic um, company information being shown. So um, you now have a more sort of sophisticated profile should you have been a signatory previously. Next slide, please. Within training, there is the Global Compact Academy, I cannot mention it often enough, which is available to all organizations and all employees of participating businesses. There are virtual how-to sessions on key areas towards delivering um, the goals, sustainable development goals. There are e-learning courses to help participants learn concepts in their own time. There's an influencer series um, basically showcasing prominent leaders from businesses and the United Nations um, to help people understand the leadership area and new sustainability issues coming forward. New topics include inclusive procurement, women entrepreneurship, breakthrough innovation, tra transformational governance, financing the 2030 agenda and ocean sustainability. In terms of SME specific academy offerings, there's a brand new SME e-learning module. This is available to all participants. So again, access is through the academy platform. It is also available to non-participants. So prospects can request access to the course via a website that um, Jesse, I believe is sharing with us in the chat box. And more about this from Sibiya on the next slide, please. Great, thank you, Greta. So as Greta mentioned, the Academy is now available to all companies in the UN Global Compact and to all employees within the company. And personally, I learned a lot and benefited a lot from this learning platform. So I definitely want to encourage all of you and all of you to encourage your employees to start leveraging this wonderful learning platform from
from the UN Global Compact. Actually, back in uh, this year alone, so far, we already have more than 300 courses um, have, an, have been accessed by our Australian companies. And last year, we had a total of 10, uh, about 1,050 uh, access uh, by Australian companies. All of those courses are available in English, which is obviously a great benefit for all of you there in Australia. So particularly for the SME learning tool, as you see on the screen here, this is particularly created for small and medium sized companies like yours. The series is called Future Proofing, Proofing Your Small and Medium Sized Enterprise. It's a very interactive 60 minute e-learning module. It's designed to help you break down the barriers and get you started on your sustainability journey. And the course together has two short modules. Each is 30 minutes long. And in module one, you can explore those basic concepts and why the 10 principles are relevant to your business operations. In the second module, you will further dive deeper into the 10 principles by exploring what your business can do in relation to the four areas of human rights, labor, environment, and anti-corruption. There are some business examples I can also uh, read about or learn about from those modules. So after completion, all of your employees at the company will learn to understand the 10 principles, get the benefit of a principle-based approach, and they will learn more about, oh, that's the benefit of my company in the UN Global Compact. I see the value here and I can contribute many more. And they can also learn how to take very practical steps to integrate the 10 principles into their business operations and strategies with even limited time and resources. So I encourage all of you and all of your colleagues to join the session. And Greta, now over to you to share more updates on ways companies can report and track their measurable progress. Thank you very much. Um, I think there's a, we skipped a slide. There we go. Thank you so much, Elena. Um, so let me talk about the new communication on progress format. Uh, existing participants most certainly have heard about this before, but this is an important recap. Um, the enhanced communication on progress, or COP as we call it, is a requirement for all participating companies starting in 2023. It constitutes a significant revision from the COP that is currently in place, which is a narrative type sort of report. Um, so what is changing when it comes to the COP starting in 2023? We will be transitioning from a narrative format requesting the submission of a report to a standardized questionnaire requesting the online completion of a set of questions on the 10 principles and the SDGs. So these will be the exact same 60 questions for all participants. Sometimes there will be filter questions, obviously, but there's no differentiation between large corporates, SMEs, or other type of businesses. I'd like to highlight that we recognize that companies, particularly SMEs, are at various sustainability maturity stages. Hence, while completing the set of questions, companies have the option of selecting not applicable if the issue area is not yet being addressed by the company. Introducing, we will be introducing a digital signature system for submission on the statement of the chief executive officer. Um, also, we'll be introducing a universal submission period starting on the 1st of March, and it goes through to the 30th of June each year. So every single participant is required to submit their COP during that timeline pertaining to their latest, you know, company relevant data collection period or reporting period. Having one single question, questionnaire and therefore no differentiation levels um, is quite important. So every participant answers the same set of questions and it makes it a bit more um, easier for us to do benchmarking exercises and see where there might be gaps that we then need to address through our programmatic offering. There won't be a COP Express form anymore for any of those who might have used that in the past. Um, Jesse is going to share a link to the Communication and Progress page, which holds a comprehensive FAQ document as well as an actual copy of the new 2023 questionnaire. Now, next slide, um, let's go to events, announcements, and other offerings. And the next slide again, please. 
You will likely all know that in general, we run several regional and thematic events in 2021. Us, the local network Australia, hosted over 25 events, including a number of large dialogues and forums. In 2022, we are continuing to deliver events such as um, forums and dialogues um, uh, let me, so I just jumped a row, sorry. Major conferences are being held every two years with the next one being due next year. Our website hosts a number of publications which are currently available for free um, and can be downloaded. Um, and we host publication launches with the authors. When there are updates or changes in the landscape, we create timely events. An example is our 21 days to COP26 event last year. Um, a key novelty is, and we would have to go to the next slide for that, please, um, our modern slavery community of practice for SMEs. You can see it on the left-hand side. It's the second bullet point. After much success of our modern slavery community of practice, we, uh, which have previously been held for companies required to report under the Modern Slavery Act, meaning they have revenue greater than $100 million dollars per annum and um, we have decided to run one specifically for SMEs um, who are often also impacted by this legislation as suppliers to larger companies. This will be a by invitation only offering to our existing participants or maybe by then new participants and that's planned for November. It'll be held virtually so please connect with me if you would like to be put on the invitation list. Let me now outline other confirmed offerings um, from us, the UNG CNA. We uh, have ambition accelerator programs coming up. Uh, registrations are, for example, closing soon for the next SDG ambition accelerator, accelerator which will start in October this year. I'll speak about this uh, in more detail in a minute. If you are interested in SME-specific offerings of the Bribery Prevention Network Hub, please navigate to briberyprevention.com and click on the news and events tab. You will find, amongst other content, a recording of a webinar titled In-Country Advice and Assistance for SMEs. Is it, it, sorry, it is focused on Australian SMEs that take their business to the world and that need to be alert to bribery and corruption risks in the jurisdic jurisdictions where they operate. There is a range of resources available too. The current presentation will also be held again later this year to update new joiners and interested SMEs. So if there are new staff members or new colleagues that should be across our offerings, please feel free to register for the next event as well. In general, these sessions will also get recorded and the link to the recordings will be shared with anyone who has registered. For interested businesses or those who need a bit of a refresher about the history and purpose of the United Nations Global Compact, Compact we are holding virtual open house sessions regularly. Next slide, please. Okay, as mentioned, accelerator programs. In 2022, we offer two accelerator programs that run over six months, focusing on specific areas. Accelerator programs are very suitable for SMEs and present a great peer learning and networking opportunity. They are based on thought leadership work and are designed for companies to make tangible changes in the processes and activities of their business. So I saw a question coming through earlier from Sasha um, asking how to amplify uh, our impact as an SME. I would say accelerator programs are a fantastic way to start. Let me talk about the Climate Ambition Accelerator. This is currently running and will be going until November 2022. It is designed to provide businesses with the base knowledge and skills needed to accelerate progress towards achieving net zero emissions, including how to set a science-based target. Participating businesses gain access to global best practices, again, peer-to-peer -peer learning sessions, capacity building sessions, and on-demand training. Participants will be asked to, nom to nominate two representatives, regardless of which uh, ambition accelerator you are attending. However, only one representative is expected to join the live sessions. Ideally, this representative will then be responsible uh, for greenhouse gas emissions, accounting, management or reporting. In total, participants can expect to dedicate 25 to 30 hours on the Climate Ambition Accelerator over the six months. With the SDG Ambition Accelerator, 
This too is a six month program that will challenge and support participating companies of the UN Global Compact in setting ambitious corporate targets and accelerating the integration of the SDGs into core business management. We will start again in October this year with a brand new SDG Ambition Accelerator and spots are filling quickly. So please note that um, it is a requirement to be a UNGCNA participant to join. If you have questions about this, please reach out to me after this session. I can email you further information. Next slide, please. Here you can see some screenshots of our offerings, such as our bite-sized learning videos. We also have a podcast series that is available for free and covers topics such as ethical investment on the SDGs, the path to net zero, etc. And last but not least, our news and events page gets updated regularly and according to upcoming events and learning opportunities. I highly recommend subscribing to our monthly bulletin as it has all upcoming opportunities listed both on the global, regional and um, local level. <laughs> Next slide, please. A quick reminder to also make use of our many publications. You don't have to be a participant to access those. Our UN Global Compact Digital Library is designed to help you find the resources you need to take the next step on your sustainability journey. There are many forms of guidance, including for SMEs. Some examples of publications include the Family Friendly Workplace Guide, our Anti-Bribery Procedures, sorry, the, sorry, are, are your anti-bribery procedures adequate guidance for SMEs, the SME guide to corporate sustainability, and a guide to traceability for SMEs. These are just a couple of examples. Over to you, Semiao, for our global offering on the next slide. Thank you, Greta. And as we learned from the poll earlier, many of our guests here hope for more collaboration. So a great way to connect with your global peers, with experts and with the broader UN system are through our global flagship events. And with more than 30,000 event attendees on an annual basis, these events really offer this unparalleled networking opportunity with industry leaders and peers. So on the screen here, you see the list of flagship events for this year alone. And for next year, we will have a similar list. So for participants in the UN Global Compact, we will continue to share event, uh, event invitations with you. So please look out for those invites for next year. And events like Uniting Business Live and Leader Summit, they offer very high level multi-stakeholder dialogues local knowledge and support on the impl implementation of strategies, partnerships, and leadership examples. Many of our sessions throughout our flagship events are being focused on SMEs because that's also the UN Global Compact's focus of engagement. And also to highlight, the online access is always complementary to all of our participating companies and all of their employees. And we have covered a lot of recent updates on engagement. Greta, over to you for next steps. Thanks a lot, Simiao. Stakeholder mapping. So this is the only slide I have on this, and I'll talk to that. Um, just a few sentences. Uh, the stakeholder mapping work has started this year and will continue throughout the next months. Actually, I think I'll never stop. Um, what that means is that, uh, we have conversations with our participants to find out what matters to them. We ask for the key trends and strategic priorities this year, what's on the horizon beyond 2022, and what is your preferred mode of deliver delivery. So webinars, workshops, publications, in-person events, and so forth. The goal for us is to fine-tune our programmatic offering for a membership base and to be able to better respond to emerging topics throughout the year. So we pivot a lot when it comes to our offering. So before I tell you about the top five topics and areas of interest um, in a moment, can I please ask everyone to add, add uh, into the chat window what their priority topics are at the moment or that what they anticipate will be coming up in the next 12 months. This can range, range from anything to do with sustainability, reporting, networking and events, business development, etc. I'd love to have a quick look at what your key topics are.
Anyone? <laughs> okay, maybe I've, I've blocked your creativity. It's too much going on. What I might do, connecting the jigsaw pieces. Yes, thanks. <laughs> that makes total sense, Robin. Um, that's a very good one. Yeah, I think also that speaks to reporting and um, disclosure a lot. Managing our SDG and CSR relationships with larger members. Yes, thanks, Greg. Re-engineering business models to more to a more circular system. Yes, I absolutely understand that. Sharing our sustainability report with more stakeholders. Thank you for doing that. <laughs> Great idea. Uh, finding a simple way to report with oh, this was jumped. Sorry, simple way to report with minimal employee hours. Yes, that's a big one. So restricted resources, connecting gender to human rights, to greenhouse gas emissions, to innovation and entrepreneurship, et cetera, absolutely. Thanks, Robin. Um, remaining sustainable as we scale significantly. That's a tough one, yes. Looking after staff and after resources um, and doing the right thing without having to um, rejig everything. Market development, business growth and energy, Plus setting a science-based carbon target. Fantastic. Thanks, Mark. Very uh, reflected answers. Thank you so much. Okay, what I'll do now is close this window and tell you what the top five um, sort of most um, priority topics are for, for those SMEs I have spoken to. Number one is gender equality, diversity, and inclusion, followed by supply chain sustainability, which is often particularly relevant for multinational corporations, but also for producers and manufacturers of goods, which are often SMEs, but I don't need to tell you that. Number three is reporting and disclosure. Uh, on a spot number four is meeting with and learning from advanced groups and businesses, which is something that very much occurs through our uh, Ambition Accelerator programs. And last but not least, collaboration with peers. Um, I've heard that a lot that um, people have said, we are happy to collaborate even with our uh, competitors um, because we've got nothing to lose and an action needs to be taken. Other topics include um, anti-bribery and anti-corruption. In-person events are very high on the list, understandably, and ESG in general. So in case I have not spoken to you directly yet about the stakeholder mapping exercise, please let me know what your key topics of relevance are this year and beyond. You can email me and or we can set up a short call. I'd love to have a chat. With that, we conclude this part of the presentation. And Simiao, I'd like to quickly check in with you um, to see whether we should go to questions first and then do the demo. Yeah, great. Let's see. Do we have any question from the audience? Maybe I, I maybe some colleagues are preparing for their questions. But while we wait for the questions, I also want to shout out to Greg. I see we have Greg, Mr. Greg Welsh here in the audience. Welcome, um, Greg, and great to have you here. I want to share with everyone as the UN Global Compact SDG pioneer back in the year 2018. And that is another exciting recognition program we run every year. We recognize individuals coming from any UN Global Compact participating company, regardless of the sector, regardless of the size. We recognize these individuals' great work promoting the 10 principles for advancing the UN Sustainable Development Goals in their company, in their local society. And we invite these individuals to come to, come to the UN World Compact annual flagship events, as we mentioned in the presentation, to share their inspirational stories. So I, I was very privileged to meet Mr. Welsh back in the year 2018. Welcome. And I also want to encourage everyone else to, uh, to become the SDG pioneer in the future. So I want to highlight that. Uh, thank you, Greta. And do we have any questions from the audience? And maybe we can move on to the academy demo while we wait for questions, because I don't see any questions. If I please let me know if I missed the questions. Okay. So yeah, I want to quickly share with everyone, as Greta mentioned, the UN Global Compact now has collapsed the engagement tiers. So all companies in the UN Global Compact now get full access to the UN Global Compact programmatic offering. And the key offering is on capacity building, which is the online academy learning platform. 
is a platform to really help you fast track your sustainability strategy and skills. So on the screen here, you see this is how you can gain access to the Academy platform. So we have two sets of users. One is for the existing UN Global Compact contact points. So if you are the focal point for your company to engage with the UN Global Compact, I am sure that you already have this contact point role to the system. So you already have an account associated to the UN Global Compact portal. So for those of you who already have these accounts, you may log in to the UN Global Combat Academy directly to sign in with my UN Global Combat account and then start learning. And then for other colleagues, or because we mentioned it's now available to all employees within your company, so you can encourage those colleagues who don't have any connection with the UN Global Combat itself now to request for a Academy Learning account. So when they go to the Academy page, they can click on UN Global Combat Participant, but don't have a login, create one here. And then we ask them to input their company name and use their email address, uh, their business email address, and then we'll get the access automatically. So very simple sign up process. And if we have time, I am happy to share my screen with the demo, if that's okay, Alana. Wonderful. Thank you so, so much. So one second, let me pull my screen up. So I am sharing my screen. So as I mentioned, for any new colleagues to, to, um, to create an account, when they click on sign in, they can click on the top one option, create an account here. And for those of you who already have an account, please click on sign in with my UN Global Compact account. And I have already logged in. So I'm just going to use my account to share this demo with you. So after you log in, you will see this welcome homepage of the Academy. And here you will see three key navigation bars. And we are grouping our courses by first learning experience, second by topic, and third by language. So by learning experience, what we mean by that is we have different type of courses. So for example, foundations are those fundamental basic courses that we think everyone should take to learn more about sustainability. So it covers some really fundamental topics like what is what are the 10 principles and SDGs? How can I take action to advance those? So very fundamental knowledge and then we also have learning plans those are more in depth in series is a learning plan on a particular topic for example greenhouse gas accounting is a learning plan with a series of courses on that topic and we're going to share with you first what is greenhouse gas accounting for example and then why is that important for company And then third and fourth a series will be on greenhouse gas accounting for, for scope one, two, and three, more in depth. It's a learning theory. And then deep dives are expert-led sessions, usually one hour session. We have experts to come in to share about the conceptual knowledge. And then we have a practitioner from a business community to share more about the from the practical side. Usually the deep dive sessions are one hour long to take a deep dive onto that particular topic. We also have inspirational conversations with a change maker in the field of sustainability. You can see that as a TED talk uh, or a conversation between the UN Global Compact and that expert or change maker, maker to be inspired. And then we have micro learnings. Those are guided documents. So for those of you who don't want to watch a video to learn, if you prefer to read and learn, those micro learnings are designed for you. And then we have recorded sessions from the past and then by topic we also group them into really important topics related to the business success on sustainability and then we also translated most of our courses into multiple languages so if you have colleagues from other parts of the world who speak different languages or if you have subsidiaries from other parts of the world also you, you can encourage them to join sessions in other languages and yeah so this is the academy platform 
And we also have ways for you to learn more about how to navigate the platform. So if you if you are new to the platform, we also have this user guide and videos to guide you along your sustainability journey. And a note to our human resource colleagues, if we have any in the room, if you're interested to keep track of your internal employees learning journey, you can also reach out to the UN Global Compact, you can always email me, and then we can share a regular user report with you. So you can keep track of how many employees from your company are already using the platform, and then what is their learning status. All right, so I think I've shared a lot, Greta. Uh, how's everyone doing? Do we have any questions from the audience? Any questions, anyone? I can't believe it. I was expecting at least five. <laughs> Currently, what percentage of UNGC participants are SMEs? That is a great question, Mark. Um, I think I can only talk to our global, um, sorry, our local network here in Australia. And we have about, let me quickly think, we have roughly 240 participants in total. And I would say we have 40 SMEs. I will look it up for you and email you the number. I am not 100% sure. Thank you, Simi. Globally, 68% participants are SMEs. Yeah, it might be a bit more, actually. You're right. I'll find that out. SMEs, local network. Any other questions? Maybe one more word on the um, accelerator programs, because I really think that they are... Um, I'm going to get to this question um, in a second. Um, I think that the accelerator programs are particularly well designed to meet SME needs because of that peer learning um, opportunity where you talk to either companies um, that are at a similar sort of stage and of level of maturity in their sustainability journey. Otherwise, why would they take a course on um, how to set a you know, science-based target, for example. Um, but every now and then, what we've heard as fe feedback-wise is that there's companies who are a little bit more advanced on their, uh, on their journey and therefore um, are basically almost like mentors to those who, who are sort of earlier in the journey. And um, another thing that I've um, seen a, fair, a few times is that after the sort of conclusion and, and finishing uh, of the of the programs, um, companies stay in touch and create little sort of chat groups. Um, so they they stay in touch and become the alumni. And so we are we are looking at sort of um, picking that up and making a little bit more out of this as well to create a bit more ongoing value based on what has um been learned together. Okay, I'm going to go to those questions. We have 90 SMEs. Thank you so much, Sarah. I appreciate it. Can you please confirm the cost for SMEs to participate in the UNGC? We were advised about 12 months ago that it was changing from free participation to 2K. Is that still the case? That is a fantastic question. Thank you so much. So what's happening is that when you join the Global Camp Compact on the global level, no matter if you are an SME a university or um, a, a huge corporate is participation on the global level is free of charge. However, by the end of 2022, all global members are required to join their local networks. You might remember that we have nearly 70 local networks around the world with us, the UNGCNA being one of them. And so we are the ones that when you join us um, to invoice you. Those fees do get shared with the global office. However, when you join the local network, um, then we you will receive an invoice. For SMEs, that is correct. It's $2,000 per annum. We invoice our participants at the end of each year covering the following calendar year. If you joined today, you would be invoiced on a pro rata basis. So for the remainder of the year. Um, what that means is that you then get access to all our local offerings. So, for example, you can then join the accelerator programs. You can gen then join the modern slavery community of practice for SMEs. Um, so you would then be included in sort of anything that we are offering on the local basis. We have a programs team that covers the area of business and human rights, environment and climate change, uh, the integration of the SDGs and anti-bribery, anti-corruption. So this is our sort of in-house expertise. And then we collaborate with others to, 
to put up to create events, networking events, um, learning events, webinars, courses, and so forth. Um, so I hope that answers your question. There's a couple more questions. What is the main reason that SME join our membership as participants of UNGC? I don't quite understand the question. What is the main reason that SMEs join us? Interesting. I'm happy to address that, uh, Greta. So I think SMEs join the UN Global Combat for multiple reasons. The top one reason is actually about reporting, as the UN Global Combat has a communication on progress requirement that any disclosure of their past year's progress on the 10 principles and SDGs is a very clear demonstration to their stakeholders, like their customers, their regulators, their partners about the, their action on the on sustainability and this strong commitment. I think that's the top one reason. And then a second top reason is to access resources. As at the beginning, many colleagues here addressed that they have uh, insufficient resource or access to resource. So you and Global Compact will help cut through the complexity to offer tailored and simple guidance to our SMEs to help them to achieve their sustainability journey. So I think these are some of the main reasons, but I think that's a great question to ask our audience because we have so many wonderful SME participants here with us. If anyone want to share why you chose to join the UN Global Combat, feel free to do so. I think this is also a, a, a exciting component of the UN Global Compact that we bring companies together, like-minded companies, together to share, to enable peer-to-peer -peer learning, and then to inspire each other. So I think this is a wonderful uh, demonstration of our value as well. Back to you, Greta. Thank you very much, Samia. That, that's fan fantastic. Um, Nick from IQ Energy asked, when is the next Young SDG Innovators Program? So that refers back to accelerator programs. You saw four uh, on that slide. Um, and we in Australia have... Um, run two as a local track is what it's called. That means that we run those uh, ambition accelerator programs. That, that means that we organize them and they are open to Australian participants. And we um, we are basically hosting them, running them. And in, in some cases, we collaborate, for example, with Accenture or with WSG on those. You do have access to other accelerator programs um, via the academy. Um, Simiao, correct me if I'm wrong. I do understand that it's possible for, for example, an Australian SME to join an overseas accelerator program. The only hindrance might be the time zones, <laughs> given that we in Australia, there is uh, every now and then a bit of a hurdle of, um, you know, time, time zone discrepancy, I would call it. Um, but I also believe that there are recordings of previous um accelerator programs that you would have access to through the academy. Is that correct, Simia? Yes, correct. For some accelerator programs, we do have a global track. So if the network is not running the local track, you can join the global one. It's facilitated in English, so I don't think uh, you'll be, that'll be a problem for you. Uh, but Nick, I'm going to share in the, uh, in the chat a form that you can indicate your interest. So based on interest, we will reevaluate and see maybe we will run that program in the future uh, in your local network. And you can learn more about the Young ICG Innovative Program on the forum as well. And uh, the timeline is usually, uh, the program will usually begin in the early of the year, but nomination will usually open in October for the YSIP program. And uh, yeah, uh, you can also reach out to us if you're really interested and we can see how we can help you to join those programs from other in you know, other countries. Mm. Thank you. Fantastic. And Camilla asked, how would you reach out to or channel your messages to SMEs? Well, that's also a very good question. Um, I think when it comes to how we communicate with all our participants, there are sort of different um angles of engagement. So firstly, there's the global office that sends out communication that goes to all participants, but also uh, tailors it towards uh, business types, including SMEs. Um, then on the local network level, you have um, overall um, communication that goes out to all participants, regardless whether you are an SME or larger corporate, it doesn't really matter. Excuse me. <coughs> but <clears throat> you will have seen 
emails from me or from the team that is specifically for SMEs only. So for example, someone mentioned earlier um, the change of um, sort of membership requirements, the fact that um, businesses now need to join the local network to remain active participants. That was sent to, um, to SMEs specifically because we have a lot of global member SMEs or global participant SMEs, um, which will be required to join their local network. So there is bespoke communication that goes out. Um, but I'd be interested if you would like to see this, um, you know, designed differently or if you have any sort of suggestions. Um, there's another message there. I'm conscious of time. We've got four minutes to go. Oh, someone has to go. Thank you so much, Greg. <laughs> Great to see you online. Thanks, Kamala. Um, any other questions at this stage? As I'm waiting, I'm letting you know that we will be doing another SME um, sort of benefits presentation um, in October. It's scheduled for October. Please send colleagues or attend yourself if you're interested. There's always updates and news to be across. Um, reach out to me, Greta, if you have any specific questions. Um, if you are not yet a participant, please reach out to me. I can um, talk you through the benefits of joining again and assist you with signing up. You will sign up on the global level first and then you join us on the local level. Um, yeah, if you could um, take that survey that has just been shared in the chat box, or you can just simply sort of scan the QR code on the screen, that would be greatly appreciated. This was the first SME presentation of this sort of kind. I would say worldwide, because Simiao and I have put it together. We would love your feedback. Um, there's a lot of information in there. So we do understand that, um, you know, you might say focus on this or focus on that. We would be really interested in hearing your feedback so we can improve next time. Time. Um, and I very much look forward to being in touch with you, hearing from you and answering any questions that might come up later on.